This is episode 148 of the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. Five things to know about Georgia nursing home regulations. The Nursing Home Abuse Podcast is dedicated to providing news and information for families whose loved ones have been injured in a nursing home. Here are your hosts, Georgia attorneys Rob Schink and Will Smith. Welcome back. My name is Rob Schink. And I'm Will Smith. And we certainly hope that your May is progressing fantastically. Uh-huh. Fantastically? You were an English major, is that right? Fantastically? Uh, progressing, yeah, because it's an adverb. Yeah, but does that word exist? Does, does the word... Oh, fant- does the word, I don't know, fantastically. Fantastically delicious. No, they are magically. Oh, magically delicious. delicious. Okay. Um. So just as a a reminder, um, May is Older Americans Month. Mm -hmm. This is the month where we um, raise awareness for and and show appreciation for uh, Americans that are 65 years and older. And this is also May 25th. Yes. Which means it is the anniversary of Star Wars. Star Wars debuted in May... 25th of 1972, I think. 1978? 1980? No, when was it? It was May 1977, but I'm not sure if it was the 25th. Hmm. Okay. So let's, let's, Gene. um, We'll have Gene look that up. Gene will need to look that up. So um, we wanted to have this episode dedicated to. Oh, look at that. Uh, Well, that's one. That's Star. That's Return, Return of the, of the Jedi. Jedi. Is May twenty fifth, nineteen eighty three. Yep. So you said a new hope. Yeah. Um, or you were trying to say a new hope. I don't know. Yeah. So when did it? It's back up here. It just says nineteen. Yeah, nineteen seventy seven. Uh, hmm. Well, okay. Anyway, it, it was nineteen seventy seven in May. But you're right. I just don't know if it was the twenty fifth. Right. So. This episode, we is starting off tremendously, and we are going to be talking about... Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I may, May 25th, 1977. How did you know that? Like, what did you hear in the ether on, on the way here this morning that made you, that, that gave you that info? I've always known that. You've always known May 25th, 1977? Yeah, I, I know a lot about Star Wars. I know... <laughs> The most about Star Wars is anybody. If anybody sitting at this table, if you anybody, know the most yeah. about Star and, Wars. Uh, and, and DC and Marvel Universe. Yes. Yeah. What does DC stand for? It's interesting that you should ask that. Okay. A lot of people get that incorrect, and they're not uh, familiar with what it was originally based on. And what is that? Right. And it's the... Well, I can tell you that the C is comics, if that helps you out. All right. And what do you think the D is? Oh, that was pretty good because that I felt like you were like you were stalling for time to look it up, but mm-hmm. that was just a regular stall. It is Detective Comics. Detective Comics, that is correct. Yes. Um, you got you and we're, one point. way or another, we're getting to the topic of the show. Oh, right, right, right. 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 So, which would be five things to know about Georgia nursing home regulations, mm-hmm. and and very quickly because I think we've covered this a few times in previous episodes, but. If a nursing home in Georgia accepts Medicare or Medicaid funding, then there are a set of regulations that they have to follow. So in other words, almost 99% of nursing homes in Georgia have to follow the regulations um, set forth by CMS. That's the federal level. So the federal government sets certain standards on these nursing homes. Mm. However, Georgia also has its own set of regulations that, that... that sometimes are more stringent mm-hmm. on nursing homes. If you have a nursing home in Georgia, you got to follow the federal in Georgia um, the regulations. And so today we're going to be talking about um, five things you didn't know about regulations in Georgia that are both from the federal and from the Georgia state regulations. Mm-hmm. So um, the department of, it's the Department of Community Health in Georgia that's responsible for health care planning, licensing, certification, and oversight of health care facilities in Georgia. And you can find everything that we're talking about if you're a law nerd at Chapter 111-8-56. Mm-hmm. The uh, Georgia regulations. Georgia regulations. The, the federal regulations exist where? Without looking, Will, off the top of your head. 
I don't know what you mean by where. Uh, what where in the code? Where in the federal uh, regulations? Oh, CFR uh, 483.10. Uh, 42 CFR 43 yeah. at all, really, yeah. at all. I um, thought I thought you meant like where do they reside? Like you like in the Library online? of Congress. The Library like, of Congress. It's really like Nicholas. It's at the at the at the front of the paw on the Sphinx yeah. is where you go to get forty two CFR four eighty three ten. Yes, forty three forty three really. Yeah. Uh, for you know more than ten, there's twenty and so forth. Yeah. So, um, the first one that I want to draw your attention to in terms of what to know about Georgia nursing home regulations, number one is that there is basically a bill of rights in both the fe- codified and both the federal regulations and the Georgia re- regulations. Mm-hmm. Just because you're a resident of a nursing home doesn't mean that you... Um, uh, that you give up your rights. You give and this, up your and rights. this came out of the 1987 uh, Social Security Act from the 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 OBRA. You, you may hear, hear it called OBRA um, or, the, or the Omnibus Reconciliation Act, which contained... A multitude of of laws and that addressed a multitude of diverse issues. One of which was um, new laws related to the Social Security Act, which directly affected nursing homes. And one of those was the establishment um, in 1987 of nursing home rights. Right. So resident rights. Right. So um, in under the federal regulations. The resident has a right to a dignified existence, self-determination, and communication with mm-hmm. and access to persons and services inside and outside the facility, including those specified in this section, which includes um, that the um, resident has the right to a representative. So, in other words, they can nominate a son, a daughter, a granddaughter, mm-hmm. or a grandson. Um, the, uh, the, what am I looking for? To participate the, in care, participate in the planning and and, and implementing of the care. Um, they have the right to be a part of the planning process. Um, they have a right to dignity and privacy. The right, the choice of attending physician. Um, they have a right to have visitors. The right to self determination, meaning the resident has the right to, and the facility must promote and facilitate resident self determination through the support of resident choice. Um, including the right to choose activities, schedules, including sleeping and waking times, health care and providers of health care services consistent mm-hmm. with his or her interests, assessments, plan of care, and applicable provisions. Um, the resident has the right to make choices about aspects of his or her life in the facility that are significant to the resident. Um, and, and these are these are... These are not additional rights that only nursing home residents have. It, the the whole purpose of establishing a, a resident's rights is all of these are met typically for all of us in in our own U.S. Constitution and our state constitutions, right? You have the right to associate with with whomever you want to. You have the right to be secure in your in your persons and, and property. Um, you have a, a right um, to you know under the Supreme Court case of Griswold, you have a right to privacy, the, which has led to you know numerous other um, litigation in the Supreme Court, but you have a right to privacy. Um, you have a right to your own body. You have a right to um, um, to make decisions for yourself. The reason that this was so important at this time is because if you've ever noticed, whenever you're in a hospital, doctors and nurses have an air of authority about them. So that when you're in a hospital for a short short term and, and they say, well, listen, you really shouldn't be eating any sugar right now, you you listen to what they say and you, and you do that. And it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's probably good to take their advice. The problem in the long-term care setting is that you are a human being with all the, the rights and privileges that, you know, are, are given to citizens um, – and you're in a you're in that that authoritative environment for the rest of your life, so you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and while it may work for the nursing home and it may be for your benefit in their mind that they say, hey, you're gonna from now on we're getting everybody up at six thirty and you're going to bed at this time. Well, the reality is this is your life. You're called a resident because you live there. If you don't want to get up at 6.30, you don't have to. 
you don't want to go to bed at nine, you don't have to. If you don't want to eat mashed potatoes, you don't have to. Um, and so it, it's it was really the beginning of of a of a reverse trend towards um, paying more attention to those that were in these long term care settings and giving them more power to overcome that that implied in in many cases real authority of of the healthcare landscape right. the right to, to, yeah. to worship the, the way you want religious activities the right to vote mm-hmm. everything um another one of the one of the things i want to highlight with the residents rights here and then before moving on to the next thing is that um you have the right to assess your personal and medical records mm-hmm. so um the regulations specifically set out that the facility and this is under the federal regs mm. the facility must provide the resident with access to personal and medical records pertaining to him or herself upon an oral or written request mm-hmm. in the form in the form and format requested by the individual if it is readily producible in such a mm. f- such form and format including electronic format or if not in a readable hard copy mm-hmm. form or such other form and format as agreed to by the facility within 24 hours mm-hmm. the facility the facility must allow the resident to obtain a copy of the records or any portions thereof upon request in two working days advance notice to the facility so in other words you feel let them know that you want to see the records they got to give you a couple the, yeah. two days tops to look at it yeah so that's really important because sometimes you know you, you you want to see if you want to go in if you're the representative of of your loved one that's in the nursing home you can go in and say hey i want to see the record print it out for me or put it on a disc and they yeah. got two days to generally they have two days to comply with that uh, the next thing is is grievances, and technically grievances are are within the residents' rights portion of the regulations. But I wanted to highlight this one in particular as the number two thing to know about Georgia nursing home regulations, um, and that is that the resident has the right to voice grievances to the facility or other agency, and in the state of Georgia, it's the Department of Community Health that hears grievances without fear of discrimination or reprisal from that nursing home. Such grievances include those with respect to care and treatment, which has been furnished, as well as that which has not been furnished, and the behavior, which includes the behavior of the staff and of other residents. Um, The resident has the right to, and the facility must make prompt efforts to resolve the grievances that the resident has so not only do you have the right to make a grievance without fear of of, Mm -hmm. you know them spitting in your food or kicking you out they have to take reasonable steps to solve the grievance yeah um the a little bit going on a bit further though um the facility actually has to have a policy and that's set forth in the regulations too the facility must establish a grievance policy to ensure the prompt resolution of all grievances regarding the resident's rights contained in this paragraph. Um, upon request, the provider must give a copy of the grievance policy to the restaurant, to the restaurant, to the resident. Um, so I think that's really important. I mean, and we we had an episode um, uh, previously. I believe that was episode 147. So that was two weeks ago. We had an episode um dedicated to where to go with complaints of nursing home abuse or neglect. We laid out that you can go to the long-term care ombudsman, the Department of Community Health, the police department, but we we highlighted that generally you want to start with the nursing home itself depending on the severity of, of the issue because every nursing home must have a grievance policy in place. And if if everything is works like it should, this is the quickest way to get anything fixed. That's right. So another thing, the the number three thing to know about uh, nursing home regulations is that the facility may not employ persons with convictions for abuse or exploitation of of elders. And furthermore, um, when a nursing home is receiving applications uh, for employment, and actually when the nursing home owner is applying for a license what has to happen will they do a background check of anybody including the owners or even uh, some investors that have direct access to the residents so they're expanding the list um and they're expanding how they uh 
they vet that list as well. And that was a law that came into effect with regard to the fingerprinting and running Last the fingerprint year. through yeah. the databases that came in, that actually was voted into law two years ago, came into effect last year and then was enforceable this as of year. January of this year. Yeah. So it's been a long, a long process. Mm-hmm. Um, but in other words, a nursing home cannot employ abusers, which I feel like goes without saying, but at some point we had to legislate that. All right. Moving on, number four of the five things about Georgia nursing home regulations that you should know is that um, every nursing home must um, undertake a comprehensive assessment of the resident at admission within 14 days of admission. um, And then, I'm sorry, let me back up. At admission, there must be a comprehensive assessment. And then a comprehensive assessment must be made within 14 days of any significant change and then if no significant change, then once every 12 months. Mm-hmm. Um, and a comprehensive assessment is basically a head-to-toe evaluation of the health of that resident from cognitive capacity to what help they need with the activities of daily living to what medications they're on, um, everything in between there. And so a, a, a nurse has to go through and do that. They sign off on it, and um, that's going to dictate uh, – the, 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 the care plan. So that's actually in the federal regulations. They are required to do that. And again, they're required to do that at admission. They're required to do a comprehensive assessment after any type of significant change in capacity. Within or, 14 or days. Within, of, yeah. of that change. And then every 12, basically annually. Mm-hmm. So they're not slipping through the cracks. Um, well, quarterly, yeah. yeah. Well, quarterly is not a comprehensive assessment. That's just a regular assessment. Um, so... Is that all we have to say about assessments? I really feel like we're going hard on this on this episode. Like, I feel like I'm shouting at people. Yeah. I think it's because well, of this coffee that we just drank. Yeah, you know, one of the things you have to remember is that the vast majority of, of nursing home residents in long-term care settings receive Medicaid. And Medicaid is what pays for most of their stay. Medicare only pays for like 100 days. And then it would only pay for the treatment that they would normally get. It doesn't pay for room and board. And the reason that I bring that up is that's that's the trade-off they get with the federal government. And that's why these assessments are so important, is that if, if you want to get paid what you are supposed to get paid for taking care of somebody who needs a lot of assistance, then you need to do a proper comprehensive uh, assessment. And that's why it's it's extremely important that they – they do that correctly, and they do it, you know, anytime there's a significant change. Because a person could go from being ambulatory to taking care of themselves and having low acuity, meaning that they require little assistance, to having a stroke and being completely bedbound and and needing at least two people to transfer, um, to transfer, you know, and that's a that's a huge change in and their acuities, and it should be a change in how they are assessed because ultimately it would be a change in in how the nursing home is compensated for that. And I had a great conversation about that concept with um, attorney Bill um, Rivera um, on a previous episode, and we talked about um, unlawful evictions from nursing homes that Mm -hmm. has become a a large problem. That's because what happens is that the nursing home will accept these rehab um, residents for for the short term rehab to and get that hundred days to, to get of, Medicare. The, of Medicare because Medicare reimburses at a higher rate than Medicaid yeah. and then after the hundred days they dump them for for contrived um, for contrived reasons and so the AARP um, litigation foundation are, are are fighting nursing homes across the country oh yeah. Um, uh, Iris Gonzalez Iris Gonzalez uh, was leading that charge yeah. uh, and, a year a couple years ago yeah but uh um. What was I thinking? Uh, oh yeah, it was a it was a big story up in New York too because they were instead of helping this person apply for Medicaid and going through that process, which is more costly for the nursing home uh, because there's a chance they're not going to get Medicaid, and then you can't get blood from a stone. So I mean, if you're trying to get money from somebody that doesn't have it, you, you know you're out of luck. So what they would do is hundred days, get that quick Medicare cash. And then they would discharge some of these people to those um, – what are those inns, those um, 
those weekly motels, uh, they would just put this person who's a nursing home resident yeah. in a in a in a you know a week long motel stay and say, see ya, Sayonara. good luck. Um, so if you're interested in that conversation, go check that out. And then moving on here, number five thing to know about the Georgia nursing home regulations mm -hmm. is that you have the right to competent care. And, yeah. and within that, it means that, um, a doctor must visit the resident once every 30 days for the first 90 days after admission. Mm -hmm. And then after that, every 60 days. So a, a primary care physician or a physician must see that resident every 30 days for the, for the first 90 and then every two months after that. Um, without, and that's, that's under the federal and the state regulations. Um, with regard to registered nurse, a full-time director of nursing is required who, and who cannot also be the administrator. And they must, devote a, they must devote time to administration of nursing services. And that's a Georgia regulation. So you have to have a full-time director of nursing. Um, the Georgia nursing homes must have a, a registered nurse, licensed undergraduate, or LPN on duty and in charge of all nursing activities every shift. That's a that's a Georgia regulation as well. Um, a minimum of two hours of direct nursing care per patient in a 24-hour period must be provided to every single resident of a Georgia nursing home. And see, here's here's something about the regulations that I I don't like is. I like the personal care home regulation on staffing because it's very specific and I and I think it's good. It's a whole different situation. Personal care homes, you have to be ambulatory. Mm -hmm. We've already done a, a, a thing about that. Um, th th there are a whole different group of, of individuals that are being cared for, but they give a specific ratio of, of work workers to people. So in a personal care home, you can't. You must have at least at night one to fifteen, in the day one to twenty-five. The regulations here in Georgia are a little slippery for skilled nursing facility, and what I mean by that is they say you need at least two hours of direct nursing uh, care, and I I would prefer if it said that you need. Um, you need one CNA or undergrad LPN, uh, but at least one nursing assistant or one nursing worker um, per every 10 residents or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we'd have to adjust it with acuities, but yeah, I, I was going to say, because what we have right now is it's in, it's, it, it's hard to enforce because it, direct care, even direct care, even though it has definitions, it's still, it's hard to keep track of it. And and finally, within the competent care portion of this, is that there must be um, a physician designated as chief of staff, and they, they the nursing home must have a professional staff consisting of at least one physician, one dentist, and one RN that kind of navigate the care. Yeah. Um, so those are some five things to know about Georgia nursing home regulations. First, that you have a bill of rights or of residence rights that have everything to do with dignity, privacy the right to live second is that they that there are regulations governing the grievance process there's you have the right to make a formal grievance mm -hmm. against the nursing home the third is that you should be free from abusers mm -hmm. um that the, the nursing home there's regulations that prevent them from hiring people that have a history of abuse or exploitation the fourth is that a comprehensive assessment is mandatory under these regulations and they are mandatory or they are required to be take to take place at admission and then every year or 14 days after a significant change that's right and th and then um competent care you're guaranteed competent care under these regulations which means that there must be a certain amount of physician hours nursing hours and um a professional staff available to treat every resident Mm -hmm. um, so those are the five things to know, in our opinion, about nursing homes. And that's right. not the only things to know. There's like it's a thousand things to know. List, yeah. Not an exhaustive list, just a, a list off the top of our heads this yeah. morning. Um, but um, let's see, May 20. Oh, we mentioned at the top of the show that it is Older Americans Month. Mm -hmm. So go hug someone that's over 65 years old. And tell them that, and tell them that Will Smith told you to. Yeah, it's over 65. It's not just Americans who are older than you. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a good way of looking at that. Yeah. Um, 
But at any rate, that's actually going to conclude this episode of the Nursing Home Abuse mm-hmm. Podcast. You can you can um, consume each and every episode either online or wherever you acquire your you podcast. You can only from. get these these podcasts from iTunes. Only iTunes is the only location. Everything that, else has been destroyed at this point. Yeah. Or if you go down to um, the Majestic Diner on Ponce de Leon right. Avenue and click um, A17 on the jukebox, mm-hmm. then the Nursing Home Abuse podcast begins to play. Mm. Um, but we thank you for your attention, making it through this whole episode. And with that, we will see you next time. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. Nothing said on this podcast, either by the host or the guest, should be construed as legal advice, nor is intended to create an attorney-client relationship between the host or their guest and the listener. New episodes are available every Monday on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube and our website, nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. Again, that's nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. See you next time.